قطعا مسئله برمیگرده به مسئولیت شورای امنیت سازمان ملل متحد برای در اصل رسیدگی به این پرونده از آنجایی که ایران امضا کننده قواعد روم نیستش و به این لحاظ شکایت مستقیم به خود دادگاه کیفری برای یک شهروند یک گروه امکان ناپذیره و باز از طریق سازمان ملل اقدام کرد که مجددا در این مورد این مسئله تاکید شد تا آنجا که من اطلاع دارم مبانی که در این شکایت نامه ذکر شده بیش از حد لازمش عوامل کافی است در جهت آنچه که در استاتوت روم مشخص شده به عنوان علائمی و عواقبی از نظر جنایت بر علیه بشریت ما اکنون نمیتونیم از دادگاه کیفری به نامی چیز خاصی بخوایم تا زمانی که سازمان ملل مراجعه بده این پرونده رو به دادگاه کیفری First of all, it's good to be back in Holland. I've been here many times before, but particularly this occasion. There were some of us from the very beginning who believed in a secular parliamentary democracy as an alternative to this theocracy. And maybe 30 years had to go by for all the price we had to pay to appreciate the values of freedom, of liberty, of pluralism, of respect for another person's opinions and tolerance. Perhaps this generation understands better than the previous one how important it is to fight not just for your rights, but your opponent's rights. I often said to my strongest detractor, if I don't fight for your right to oppose me for everything I stand for, I won't be able to rely on your turn to defend me for my rights to have my opinions one day. And this is what it's all about. And if our country tomorrow is attacked, it will just destroy our chances to, for democracy and for that matter for unified Iran. So much damage has been done by this regime that even if we don't have this problem from an international perspective, I don't know which Iran would be left for those of us fighting for it. Two more? Yeah, oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. I hear always that uh, the Green Revolt um, didn't make it to a successful revolution because the people of Iran were not uh, united. Uh, there are so many groups and so many different um, opinions and uh, wishes. Uh, yeah, what do you think about that and what will it be uh, for the future of Iran? In fact, I think it's the first time in decades that you could find Iranians more than ever united for one cause, from different walks of life during the Great Movement. The problem was not the people. The problem was that the leadership was not clearly defined. And when it started to waver from the true expectation of the people, that's when they, it got deflated once again. You know, when the first student uprising took place one year after Khatami's election, back in the uh, late 90s, when the 18th of Tear movement started, I think a lot of the members of that generation felt betrayed by someone who had nation's vote. Khatami had an opportunity to become a national hero by saying either I implement my mandate or I resign under protest. He didn't do neither. He in fact congratulated the security forces for crushing down the student uprising. That was the first betrayal. When Musabi decided to say, I still want to go back to the golden days of the Imam, I think he insulted the Nedas who went out there fighting for their right, not to dispute the result of an election. Do you really think they went out there to die for the sake of a Musabi or Kianrubi? I don't believe that. I think they wanted much more. That was just a pretext. The fault is not of the people. And it's not that the people of Iran are not united. They simply don't have the right alternative or the proper leadership. That's what we need to change among ourselves. But we also need international support.